Hello everybody, Chris here. And in this video, I wanna introduce you guys to the new Snip and Sketch tool for Windows 10. It is a direct replacement for the old Snipping tool. So whenever you open up the Snipping tool, you're gonna to get this little prompt to try Snip and Sketch. So let's talk about what the new Snipping tool is all about. So when you have Snip and Sketch installed on your computer, you can start using it without actually going ahead and opening the application. So the keys to use it are the Windows key, plus the shift key, plus the S key at the same time. So if I go ahead and press Windows Shift S, then you'll see the little drop down at the top of the screen for taking a snip or a screen capture of a region on your computer screen. So let's go ahead and left click over here and drag a rectangular box for the rectangular snip. And when we do that, it's going to copy the snip to the clipboard. We can left click on the notification in the bottom right hand area. And when we do that, Snip and Sketch is going to open its image editor. So the screen capture we just took was a rectangular snip, but you may have seen at the top bar that there's actually three other ways to do it. So let's go ahead and show those now. So I'll do Windows Shift S on the keyboard, and at the top we can select one of the other options. So the second option over here is called Freeform Snip, which is really interesting. It's different than what you may see in other programs. So when we select Freeform Snip, we have the ability to left click on the screen and start moving the mouse button in any shape we desire to take a screen capture of. So wherever you drag the mouse is going to be the outline of the snip that you're trying to create. So if I just drag a random shape around the screen here, believe it or not, you can actually take a screen capture shaped like this. So I'm going to let go there and it grabs everywhere inside of that region that we drew and I can left click on it to edit it once again. So when this gets saved to a file, if you do want these other regions to be completely transparent, I would recommend saving them as a PNG image so that you keep that alpha transparency. So Windows Snip is the next option. If you have any open window, then you can take a screen capture of the entire window. So for instance, this sticky note I have open in the Stickies app, I can left click on the window and it's going to take a screen capture of that window. And what's nice about this is that you get a perfect selection of the window size, so you won't get anything extra on it like your desktop. You can also use the window capture tool to capture web browsers or games if you desire. So the last option is a full screen snip. That is going to take a screen capture of an entire monitor. So when I capture that with only one screen on my computer, you can see that it's going to capture the desktop that you guys are looking at right now. So that's handy if you need to capture everything on the screen all at once. The next feature I want to show you guys is timed screen caps. So when you have this little window open, you may not actually want to capture the snip and sketch image editor here. So when you click on new snip, there's a drop down here. So you can click on the drop down and you can see snip in three seconds, snip in 10 seconds. When you click on these, it's going to minimize snip and sketch temporarily and give you a chance to reorganize your screen so that you can capture what you actually want from your screen. So for instance, if I go to snip in 10 seconds here, the screen minimizes that program and I could open up another window, like let's say OBS where I'm recording from right here. I reorganize the screen and once those 10 seconds are up, we're gonna get the prompt to take the uh, screen capture. So we can either do rectangular, freeform, window, or full screen here. Let's just take a rectangular snip and capture all of this. And then we get our new image of whatever we just snipped from the screen. Okay, so in the middle section, let's go ahead and talk about some of the tools you have for editing your image here. So right here with a red line on top, we have a ballpoint pen. So if you click on that, it's going to give you a smooth pen shape that you can draw over your image. So if we right click on it, we can select a color that we want to draw with, and we can also set the size of the pen width. If we increase the size to a high amount, you'll start noticing that on the edges of these pen strokes, you get a little bit of blurriness anti-aliasing. And that's part of what gives it a smooth look when you start drawing onto your image, just like other photo editing software like GIMP or Photoshop. So let's go ahead and select a color here, and I'm gonna left click, and we're gonna freehand draw with this pen. And so you can draw any shapes you want with the size you want and the color you want. Now, the pencil tool is really similar. We can still right click on the pencil and select a color that's different than black if we desire. Let's increase the size of this pencil shape by a little bit. And then we'll also set a color that's gonna be more visible on this background like yellow. So if we draw with the pencil shape, it's a little hard to tell here. You can see it's not completely transparent, so you can still see some of the background behind it. But uh, to better demonstrate how the pencil versus the pen is gonna look, I'm actually just gonna take another screenshot right here. So Windows Alt Shift, 
and I'll take this area right here just so that we have a little gray space to draw over. So here we have the pencil and I'm going to zoom in on this. You can see just like when you start writing with lead in real life, it's kind of got this grainy look. And then if you compare that to the pen tool, you can see it's fully smooth and completely solid in the center. So anything that's behind the pen is not going to be visible. So there's also a third way to draw, which is the highlighter. So I'm going to do control alt shift and let's do a window snip of this text over here, the sticky note. I'll open that up in snip and sketch. We can zoom in on it a bit with control and using middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Then we can go over to the highlighter tool. So with highlighter, we can just left click and drag over our text in order to highlight it. So similar to pencil, it's partially transparent, but the look of it is a much smoother marker color. You don't get any of that pencil graininess. So to highlight your text, you can just left click and then drag it across the screen in order to highlight all of the text. So you can see my freehand highlighting is pretty sloppy. So let's talk about a couple more tools that can help with that. One is the eraser tool. So with the eraser right next to highlighter, you can left click on any edits you've previously made and it will remove the entire thing. So you don't need to draw over the entire edit. You simply need to left click hold and draw over part of it and it will remove the entire thing. Now if I hit control Z a few times and you decide that you want to reset everything back to the original screenshot, a quicker way than drawing with the eraser over every individual item is to right click on the eraser and you can choose erase all ink. So that's just going to reset everything back to the original state. Now, if you want to draw with a highlighter or a pen or pencil tool and you want it to actually be straight, there's a ruler tool inside of Snip and Sketch. So if I left click on this ruler, we can drag it to where we want it and it's actually going to serve as both a snapping and a straight edge if we draw with another tool. So I can go over to the highlighter tool and we can left click here and drag across and it is going to give us a perfect line. We can zoom in and uh, see that the snapping keeps it at the bottom wherever we have the ruler set. So in this case, we probably want the highlighter a bit higher. So I'll hit control Z to undo and I'll just adjust the positioning of the ruler. And now if we go across it again with the highlighter, we're going to get a good highlight this time. So something you'll notice about the ruler right in the center of it, there's actually an angle measurement. So if you want to rotate the ruler or give it an angle that's different than zero degrees, you just hover over the ruler and then you scroll up and down with your middle mouse wheel on your mouse. So if I scroll this up for a while, I can give us an angle of 15 degrees. And now if I go back to the pen tool and I draw over this, then we're going to get a straight line that has this 15 degree slope. So I'll just go ahead and draw this here and it's just really simple. The snapping works great. And even if you have a jittery hand, you're going to get a straight line. And even if you normally find it hard to draw a straight line, you're going to get a really smooth, perfectly straight line as long as you keep your mouse close to the ruler edge. Now note that you can also draw on the bottom line as well. So we can go down here and up here at the same time. Let's go ahead and erase all the ink now and let's switch to another tool. So if we right click on the ruler drop down, there's also a protractor here. So let's go ahead and zoom out if you don't see it. And I'll drag this protractor over to the middle of the screen. So with the protractor, we can draw full circles or parts of a circle in a angle degree measurement. So I'm going to left click here at the top and we can just drag it around. You can see the angle measurement listed right there next to the right line that we're pulling around. So if we want, we can just get it all the way down here to 45 degrees. We can also easily keep going all the way around and get a 360 degree circle. With this tool, if you use the middle mouse scroll wheel, it's going to shrink and expand the size of the protractor. So if I scroll downwards, we're going to get a smaller protractor, which would allow us to draw a smaller circle. So I'll just go around here 360 degrees one more time. Okay, one thing you may be wondering about is how I'm moving around the screen. So let's talk about panning and then zooming in and out of the image. So if you want to move the screen around, basically reposition where your screen capture is located inside of this window, hold control down and then left click with your mouse. And then as long as you're holding both of those down, you can move your mouse around to pan or reposition your screenshot. So earlier when the protractor was way out here, that was useful for me because I could kind of pan around and see it. Uh, the other way that you can see more of what's going on in your image all at once is to use zooming. So there is a zoom tool over here. You can click on that 
and then zoom in and out with the slider bar. The other option is to hold control down on your keyboard and then use the middle mouse wheel in and out. So if you scroll forward, it's going to zoom in. If you scroll downwards, you're going to get a zoom out. And the last tool over here on the middle bar is image crop. So with image crop, you can remove edges from your screen capture. So I'll go ahead and click image crop here and you'll see that it starts with four corners that go around our entire base image. And we drag those corners inwards in order to cut away part of the original screenshot and reduce it to a smaller size for the final screen capture. So you can do this with any of the corners as desired. Whatever is highlighted in this brighter area is what's going to be in the final crop. And everything that is left outside of that is going to be removed. Aside from dragging the corners, you can also click on the middle and move the shape around so that you have the same corner dimensions, but capturing a different portion of your original screenshot. And when you're done, you can just go ahead and hit apply up here in the top right or the enter key. Now, obviously in Snip and Sketch, there are some pretty useful tools for taking notes on top of your screen captures, but you may ultimately decide that you want to move the screen capture to a more full functioned editor so that you can do more with the screen capture or use it in other works. So one way that you can move this content to another program is to copy it. So you can use Control C or you can click the copy button in the top right, and that's going to copy it to your computer's clipboard so you can control V paste it into another program. So for instance, if I open GIMP or the GNU image manipulation program, I can control V paste it in here because it's on my clipboard. So as long as it's the thing you most recently captured, you can paste it into another program just with control V. So that's one way you can do it. Another option is to click on these three dots in the top right hand corner and then choose open with. So when you do that, you can select a program on your computer. So I'll select GIMP. Note that by default, the images inside of Snip and Sketch are .png files, which is a standard image format. So the program you're going to open it with should be able to handle images in some way. So I'm going to go ahead and open this in GIMP. And now we have a second copy of the image pasted into here, but we didn't need to use the computer's clipboard to do it. You can also share your screen captures with other programs by using the share icon in the top right. So you can see here if you have contacts set up with Windows, then you can share it to that. You can also add it to other devices that are connected to your computer by Bluetooth. And your third option is to use Windows apps. So those would be applications you get in the App Store, such as Twitter for Windows 10. But if you prefer not to share your images directly, you can do it the old fashioned way as well by simply using the Save As dialog. So you can hit Control S when you have an open screen capture, or you can click up here, Save As. Choose a location on your computer. So I could call this screen cap one, hit save. And now we have this image located here, which you could easily upload to any site or service that uses images like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, that kind of thing. So the last thing I'll show you before we go, if you happen to click the X in the top right on a screen cap, by default, it's actually not going to save that. So one setting that you can add so that whenever you do take a screen capture, it'll save it for you is to go to the three dots here, go into settings and then toggle on save snips. So when you enable save snips on future snips that you're going to take after you close out of this, it'll ask you to save whenever you click on the X out of it. So if I have this enabled here, I go ahead and close out of the program and I do Windows Shift S. Let's just take a uh, screen capture of the desktop there. Let's say I made some random notes here. And then now I click on the X in the top right hand corner. This time we get a prompt if we want to save our work before exiting the program. So that is a pretty useful setting to have. Let's go ahead and save it this time to the desktop and I'll just call it screen cap two, save it as a PNG. And there we go. We can double click on it and see the edits that we've made. So in a nutshell, that is about it for the snip and sketch tool for Windows 10. I hope you guys found this walkthrough of the app helpful. I have been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future content.